Facebook changing all the time as well. You know, you don't the thing that worked for you yesterday isn't necessarily going to be the thing that drives your campaign forward. So when we talk about testing, let's first of all mention so the Facebook Masterclass uh, will have launched by the time this podcast comes out, which is great. James is contributing a module on testing. It's called Stop Guessing, uh, and it's it's his testing methods that save him, him millions, which is really cool. So talk about those a little bit. Like, are they are they things that are very difficult to implement? Are they like I imagine they're rigorous, um, but 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 the baseline point of testing is to make sure that you know when you do something and, and you have an action that it was from the thing that you did. It's basically just a, a cause and effect type type relationship that you're trying to prove. Yes. So my thing with testing is I want to test as cheaply as possible because it's a necessity to test. So it's important to organize the testing in a flow that's as cheap as possible. Um, and the second thing is you need to test until the results are definitive so you can have confidence in your scale. If you, if you don't have a sound foundation of testing and you know everything is correct, then you just can't pull the trigger on big budgets with a uh, peace of mind. So the key thing, and I'll give like a quick example here. If I have to test a landing page and I have to test audiences per se, um, and I need to test images, well, it's important to me to just complete the image test perfectly because I want to get the clicks as cheap as possible so that when I test the audience or the landing page, let's say I'm going to use $50 to test an audience. If I can get the clicks down to 50 cents, I have a hundred clicks worth of testing. If I didn't do a nice job testing images and I rush, now my clicks are a dollar and I'm buying a lot less data for my money. So it's, it's, it's about having a systematic approach to testing everything in order, being disciplined. And I think also, not scaling tests. I think very often media buyers, especially in the beginning, they set up a test, it's going nice, the test actually succeeds, and they don't turn the test off, and they kind of just try to scale that thing up, and then maybe, because it's making money, and this and that, but I don't, uh, I don't do it this way. I test everything in, in, in a specific pattern, so when it's time to like hit the gas, I don't even need to look in it. I test until I have full belief in the components, so I can scale with, you know, with abandon. And then you literally start it. You, you won't try to like the last test that works best. You don't just take that and push budget to it. You will then copy oh. that maybe and start fresh. And yeah, I feel like it's some type of uh, certain level of discipline that I, I, I don't know. I don't even know if it's the right thing, but I just feel like it's important when I train media buyers to instill in them the idea to not fall in love with the little petty things like a winning test. Otherwise, it just breaks the system because now you're scaling a winner uh, as opposed to following the system and really scaling. So now the results are kind of skewed. There's like, I, I try to instill in them and myself a certain level of discipline. When a test is completed, we turn it off and then we hit phase number two. And it's hard to have that discipline because you're making money on it. But you can't, if, if you don't turn it off, you don't discipline yourself, you lose sight of like the big picture, which is just a step until the big step.